Good day, fellow learners. This is your mentor, your fact check buddy, Ray Gapus. Once again, joining you for our next generation NCLEX RN pointers. This time around, this is already set number 36. And what a way to start. Let's begin. So before anything else, I'd like to ask you to join us in this mission. Our goal is to provide free NCLEX RN application and review to 100 nurses. To help us achieve this, just watch and finish the ads in our videos. Please don't skip. And thank you in advance. We've been able to do this with your help for the past two consecutive years. And we have changed the lives of a lot of nurses worldwide because of this. And we would want to continue. Definitely, we need your help for us to continue. So please don't skip. Shall we begin? So um, in this set of pointers, we'll be having several topics which you might have forgotten to include in your list of topics that you may want to browse your notes on as you prepare for the NGM. So in order to address the question, what do we need to study? Here's my expert opinion. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Now take note, it is the most common cause of hypothyroidism that is usually autoimmune in nature. And it's common in women, it's usually found in women between the age group of 30 to 50. So middle-aged women are most at risk for this type of condition. Now, what are the things that you need to remember related to Hashimoto's thyroiditis? First and foremost, the hypothyroidism diet. I know most of you may not be aware because the things that we remember about um, hypothyroidism is the fact that in relation to their diet, we are supposed to give them low calorie diet because of their slower metabolism. However, recent studies suggest that in clients with Hashimoto's thyroiditis, gluten-free diet may help improve their condition. And when we speak of gluten-free diet, examples could be brown rice, quinoa, rolled oats. In essence, do not give your barley rye, wheat, and your triticale. Your triticale is a combination of rye and wheat. So the discharge instruction, therefore, for a client with Hashimoto's thyroiditis is to instruct them to eliminate gluten and dairy from their diet. In addition, they have to have a calorie-controlled diet. Now, in relation to the vitamins and minerals that they will need to add onto their diet, we need to instruct the client to include vitamin D and vitamin B6. And they will definitely benefit from those supplements. Um, in relation to their medication administration, you know, for a fact that in Hashimoto's thyroiditis, the condition is treated with levothyroxine or a thyroid supplement. It's best if the medication is taken on an empty stomach and instruct the client to avoid coffee when they are taking levothyroxine. Why? Coffee may worsen palpitations. And remember the fact that levothyroxine may potentially cause insomnia, so it's best given in the morning. Now, are there any additional instructions that we need to tell our clients in relation to other supplements which they may be taking. If our client with Hashimoto's thyroiditis is taking iron or calcium supplements, we need to instruct them to take their medications at least four hours after taking their iron or calcium supplements. Okay, now before we proceed any further, we'd like to, as so much as possible, give recognition to our passers. And we have here Ms. Jeremy Rima Valero Bello from the University of the Cordilleras who passed the NGN last January 16 for the State Board of New York. Our congratulations goes to you. And this is her success story. Shall I call it success recipe instead? So let's listen. To be successful in one's career, one must be passionately driven to achieve his or her goal. I myself was overwhelmed with the number of challenges that came along my way before becoming a USRN, but it did not stop me from pursuing what I want in life. 
In this journey, I was taught that a good mindset will lead you to your desired destination. Well, it'll be hard, but the beauty of life provides us with the opportunity for us to choose our hard. Maybe what she meant would be hard fought battle. My battle for this license was about the hard sacrifices I needed to make. Consistent reviews, giving up my previous work. That's part of her recipe. She gave up her work. Not passing practice exams versus the hard of settling with my what ifs and just looking at the success of others. Being in a Ray A. Gatos review system will really bring out your best potential. Thank you for the kind words, Jeremy. They go from maximizing all the resources as they can provide for you to enhancing your test-taking strategies to uplifting your spirit. Trust me, their strategies of making you do better every day works great. Moreover, make this battle for you not to impress others, not to be better than others, but to become the best version of yourself. Believe in yourself, surround yourself with the best mentors, and ask for the Lord's guidance and blessing. Keep telling yourself, that because of your faith in God's promises, it will happen. What a beautiful piece of advice. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I'm sure our YouTube subscribers are so glad that you've sent us your success recipe. Now, the next thing that we'll talk about today would be um, spironolactone, which is a potassium sparing diuretic. Now, what are the things that we need to remember and we need to tell our clients related to this drug. So it is primarily used to treat fluid buildup due to heart failure, liver failure, or in clients with kidney diseases. Now, there are, however, some drugs which could potentially interact with spinrolactone. And these are the drugs that I'd like to tell you so that when you get to see this on the test, you'll know that this drug should not be given with spinrolactone. The first drug is your amiloride because it can worsen potassium retention when it's given with spinrolactone. In essence, your amiloride can further increase potassium retention. So hyperkalemia can potentially result. And then the other drugs that you have to focus on would be digoxin, um, ACE inhibitors like lisinopril or inalapril. Remember your lisinopril, inalapril, those that ends in your pril are usually your ACE inhibitors. And they could also worsen hyperkalemia. Amlodipine may also worsen hyperkalemia. And so therefore, you have to clarify the doctor's order if the patient's taking amlodipine and the doctor orders spinorolactone. Now, what are the common indicators or manifestations of hyperkalemia that we'll find in our client with uh, who's taking spinorolactone? So take note. Muscle weakness occurs in both hypo and hyperkalemia. So in the case of a client who's taking spinorolactone, muscle weakness could mean that the patient is developing hyperkalemia, and that needs to be reported to the physician. Slow or irregular heartbeat, of course, tingling feeling, and shortness of breath. When this occurs, it's very important that the nurse should call the attention of the client's physician. It's also important that if your patient's taking spinorolactone, pay particular attention to the ECG waves. And when there is hyperkalemia, remember, think about Eiffel Tower, the tall peak, tall T wave, and you have your widened base. So you have a tall peak T wave. So pay particular attention to those changes that occur in clients with spinorolactone. And of course, we'd like to congratulate all our pastors from around the world. They keep on increasing. Thank you for the trust. For, uh, to the Ray A. Gapos review system. Next important thing that you have to remember for your test, you have your varicella vaccine. Just like your measles vaccine, um, two doses are usually given at around the same time you are supposed to be having the measles vaccine. So the first dose is given at 12 to 15 months and the second dose between four to six years of age. Now, just like in any type of vaccine, there are 
um, common side effects. One would be fever, and then mild rash could occur, and definitely pain and joint stiffness could potentially develop. Now, these are side effects, and therefore, these are not considered as a cause for the patient's alarm. What is important for us to tell the patient would be to monitor if seizures occur. If seizures occur, then we need to report that to the client's attending physician. Now, what are the common contraindications of varicella vaccine? Take note. So one would be allergy to gelatin, allergy to antibiotics like neomycin, because during vaccine manufacturing, um, they usually add your antibiotics to prevent contamination of the vaccine. Now, pregnancy is also a contraindication and immunosuppression is also a contraindication, which means clients who are undergoing chemotherapy and steroid therapy or those who are suffering from AIDS and are immunocompromised may not have the vaccine. So the next important thing that we need to ask ourselves is, how do we study? Remember, the next generation NCLEX is going to ask you to navigate technology. Some students are telling me that they know the answer, but when we do our simulation, sometimes their fingers who are not um, used to maneuvering the cursor through the mouse, by the time they press on it, they press the wrong number. So sometimes they can't undo it. So it's very important that you go into a test preparations class that will teach you how to navigate technology. And proudly at the Ray Gapo system, if you would see, our publications are available alongside very, very famous publications. In fact, one of my books, The Essential Concepts for the Philippine Nurse Licensure Exam, won in the International Book Awards. It's a first Filipino test preparations guidebook that one in that competition. And of course, the very popular NCLEX RN in a flash, of which I have a local version, and that's NCLEX 311. This is NCLEX RN in a flash, Philippine edition. The only difference is that, of course, this comes in black and white. Okay. In NCLEX RN in a flash, you can have it from Amazon. Um, it comes in colored pages. Okay. So, I asked our learners which book helped you the most. And they said, you have three books, sir. Yeah, this is the one, the first one I'm recommending. NCLEX RN Quick Fix in Pharmacology. Okay. The Nurses Reminder Sheets, very small, but full of pointers. And of course, the NCLEX 311, which according to this passer, helped her the most. And then she said, lahat po ng topic na kailangan i-focus nandun po. Or in English, all the topics that you need to focus on are in that book. She's referring to NCLEX RN in a flash. So we also have our course shells that contain all the subject areas on the NCLEX. It has videos, it has sample exams, quizzes. And if you're just lazy, you would want to listen to me discuss it for you. I have videos there. So the third, but the most important thing is you have to be in a conducive environment when you're doing your test preparations. Proudly at the Ray Gapo system, our class is very manageable. There's no overcrowding. And we're the only test preparation center that has our own NGN simulation room, which you can use for free. So may I invite you to join me in the next generation NCLEX RN Flex, the most flexible test prep class for the NCLEX RN. The fee starts at 3,499, including these three books. You hear it right. You pay 3,499, and you attend my class, including these three books. And it's your choice to attend live face-to-face, -face, live virtual, on-demand, and limited video recorded lessons, the QBank and three books, MGN strategies, and of course, our live quick fix session. So once again, this is your mentor, your fact check by the Ray Gapus at your service, and I'd like to see you as the next NGN passer from your country. See ya.